presidential report cards in tow, of course. If you did your homework, Chris Darwalt, Fox News Politics Editor, Crystal Ball, New Leaders Council Senior Fellow, and David Wool, Attorney and President Trump Supporter, longtime supporter, I might add, David. I'll go to you first. Since because day you one, have yes. supported him since day one. We're 50 days in. Give us your grade on those first 50 days of his presidency, and pluses and minuses do apply. A plus, honor roll. I mean, in seven <laughs> short weeks, Mr. Trump has completely reversed the economic malaise that the Obama administration had created over seven years. 153 million Americans and climbing are now working. We have job, a job total just released of almost a quarter million created in February alone. Stock market through the roof at 21,000 plus. Consumer confidence at a level higher than it's been in 10 years. Also, you've got the security issues. He's working on the wall, like he said. It's, it's bids will be taken soon. He's deporting violent illegal aliens who've been convicted of violent crimes aggressively and not ignoring immigration right. laws. Well, and he's, he's, he's addressing the hotbeds of Islamic terror, as, as Trace said, by getting this new order that's going to be tailored in a way that the courts will not be able to defeat. All right. Well, Trace just, just did that wonderful wrap-up for us, and and it, he pointed out these executive orders. The president, the first 50 days in office, Crystal, has issued 16 executive orders. That is roughly on pace with President Obama at this point in time, who had signed 17 at this point. Your grade for the first 50 days. I don't know if I want to say a letter grade because I don't want to be predictable oh, here. Pass or fail. But, Come yeah. on, Crystal. <laughs> I will definitely say fail. And here's why. You know, I, I honestly, essentially, he's picked off the low-hanging fruit here. He has kept some of his promises with some of his executive orders. But we don't see any movement on the big legislative issues that he's talked about. Health care reform is looking dead in the water. The plan is so bad that some people are conjecturing it may have been designed to fail. We're not seeing any movement on tax reform. And, you know, honestly, Sandra, I think this was a huge missed opportunity because I expected this president to come in and focus like a laser on the economy and on jobs and on providing for that working class base that really put wow, him in some, office. Wow, some would quickly call, call into question your comment based on what David just pointed about the stock market and jobs growth that just was announced in February. Well, the, the stock market doesn't help a lot of people out here in Kentucky and in I'm his working class I'm always confused when people base. say that because, I, I, I mean, retirement accounts are tied to the stock exactly. market. Exactly. Um, but, but let's move if, on to... If I could, you know, I thought he would come in and... <laughs> Democrats were ready to work with him on a big infrastructure bill. That's something they'd been wanting to do for a while. He could have taken that up and right. other sort of low-hanging economic fruit right off the bat. He chose to go with the more divisive parts of his agenda to start with. And as a result, you have plummeting popularity. Republicans don't feel nearly as compelled to go along with what he says because he is so historically unpopular at this point. And right, essentially well, in terms of a legislative Professor agenda Steyer where I stand to work with Congress, and I everything get him is here. dead in the water. So yes, he's picked off some low-hanging fruit, but he is historically unpopular and it's hard to see how okay. he gets much of anything done in All terms right. of movement through Congress. Chris Steyerwald, I'm sure you've got a grade for us. Well, they're both right. Um, this is sort of two administrations <laughs> in one, in that uh, what David talks about with the urgency on executive orders and all of the razzmatazz and the pen and the phone and those things, yes, that's all been there. Mm. And certainly Donald Trump's supporters, wh who are legion and loyal, uh, can feel gratified that their man is, is sticking to the core issues that he promised that he would. But at the same time, being president is hard. And your success ultimately doesn't depend on what you do with your pen and your phone. It depends on your ability to work with Congress to do big things. You can't do big mm -hmm. things until you can really legislate. So I'm going to I'm going to say at the halfway point, I'm going to say a B minus. I'll say B, B minus. I knew you would commit. All right, David, is it fair to say that the first 50 days, as The Hill put it in a piece today, has been marked more than anything by controversy, investigations into his associates, alleged ties to Russia, it points out claims of wiretapping by the previous president. Would you no, agree because with that? When you have, no, because in, a, in essence, we've got a weaponized media now, a media that is, excuse the word, hell-bent on destroying Mr. Trump. There's no question about that, other than Fox News, which has been 
absolutely fair and balanced across the board. The other ones are just, you can't even, I can't watch them anymore. It's, they're looking for anything they can possibly find, any scandal. It's going to continue this way for a long time. He's handling them very well. And one of the interesting things, I talked to a liberal friend today, and when you talk about the infrastructure, the trillion dollars he, he wants to commit to the infrastructure, that's what liberals love. That's how he's bringing people together. That's going to create right. the type of join, uh, the, the joinder of the minds that's going to make America great again. It's more than a slogan. It's a movement. It's All right. True. And that was put out in many tweets by the president in the first 50 days. Oh, yeah. uh, Chris and Crystal, uh, uh, I want to get you back in here on this commander in tweet article that NBC News put out, the 50 days of at Donald Trump. It did a lot of counting, and it looked at the first 50 days, and Trump has never skipped a day of communicating with the country via Twitter, tweeting more than 260 times since Inauguration Day. Uh, you can't say the man has not been busy, uh, but he has certainly been making his points quite frequently, Chris, on Twitter. So, look, uh, however he does it through press releases or Twitter or radio or television, it doesn't matter. Uh, the thing for Trump, and this is what really matters, is focus. Uh, uh, we're, he's out of time. There are controversies. Some of them are self-inflicted. Others are creations of the media. Uh, but he has had too many controversies. He has had too many distractions. Mm -hmm. And he has had too much drama inside of his administration. There has been too much infighting. There has been too much silliness amongst Team Trump. Time to focus. Time to get real. Time to keep your eye on the ball. They can't afford to be distracted by tweets anymore. Well, one thing I, I don't think many people yeah. can disagree with is the fact that he has been busy working around the clock seven days. He's kept us busy, that's for sure. Thanks to all three of you for being here tonight.